Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, Will Kimber here from Water Bear Photography back. Uh, today we want to talk about underwater housings. two underwater housings that we have here in our studio. Uh, we have, so the cameras that we're using inside these housings first, I just want to briefly touch on them in case you're, you know, because it's not quite apples to apples. We're not using the same camera in each housing. They are different cameras. So my usual trusty go-to is a Nikon D750. Uh, it's definitely a workhorse of a camera, but it's a little older. And as is this house, as is this housing. So this housing for the Nikon D750 is an Eichelite housing. So it's the older model. It's the clear one that they've sent, switched, since switched to a white uh, polycarbonate, I believe. So this is the older clear model, but I I really like the clear. I feel like it's nice to be able to kind of see what's happening in my camera and make sure that it's not flooding. Um, the other camera that we're gonna talk about is, it's a Sony A6500 and it's in a Nauticam housing. So this is with their smaller uh, seven inch dome port. So we just wanted to kind of compare and contrast because we've been, been getting asked a lot of questions, you know, what are some of the differences on these housings? Um, the first is definitely how you put them together. You want to talk about how you put them yeah, together? Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, the Ike Light we've had for a couple of years now in the studio, so we've gotten very familiar with putting that together. Nauticam, we've only had it for a couple of weeks, but it's um, picked it up pretty quick. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, with the Ike Light housing, so as Kimber mentioned, it's a completely clear housing assembly for the actual body, which is nice because you can see inside of it, you can see if there's any flooding going on there. Um, the Ike Light housings, they don't come with the ability to pressurize them. You buy that as like an extra add on. So we've actually added a pressure port here onto our, we can pressurize it. So with these. One, one quick aside, don't skimp on that, y'all. Don't skimp on that. Don't skimp on it. Get the pressurizing kit. <laughs> you will be sad if you don't. Yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of people think that because you're just taking it in like a pool with the depth, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but one thing to know is that as you go deeper underwater, the pressure on the outside will increase, which actually pushes these seals in more. Um, and the pressure on the inside will also compress. So uh, it doesn't really matter, really. Whether you're up towards the surface or down low, the pressure is going to adjust regardless. Um, so pressure port with the pressurizing, huh? Talk about how to put it together. I will. Okay. With the pressurizing, with it though, um, with this, it's just a gauge. You hook it up, you pump it up to like five um, inches of mercury, and you just watch it and see if it changes. If it doesn't change, it doesn't change. There's no air leaking into it, so you're vacuuming out the air is what you're actually doing yep. with this. Um, so that, that's how this one works. After that, you release it, you cap it, it's good to go. Mm -hmm. And I just with, want to tell you, this well, is really it's heavy. heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. I swam with it for four hours yesterday with two strobes on it, mm -hmm. and that's why I've got some really strong biceps. So this is a beast. Yeah, it, it's heavy. Um, the camera, as Kara mentioned, it's, it's a Nikon D750, so it is a heavier camera. Uh, and the lens we're using in there, it's the 17, the 17 to, 35. to 35. Yeah, so it's a pretty hefty lens yeah. as well. Um, so here we're going from a DSLR to a mirrorless, so that in itself is gonna drop weight, um, just in size of mm. everything compared. Um, also, in terms of putting it together, it's really hard to see, but there's these big, heavy-duty, silver clasps oh yeah there's there's yeah. three of them um they're pretty tricky to, to get on and off so that's how the mechanism of how it seals in addition to you know putting on the dome port and clamping that on as well so yeah so with, with these as Kara mentioned has the latches we'll talk about the other one in a minute and how it's different it's much easier to use the dome port basically just has these clips that retain it in place you pop them out and it just lifts off and then the between the, the port and the dome, it's a threaded connection. So there's O-rings in all these here at the door to the housing and here and in here. So all these need to be lubricated. And the one thing that I don't like about this housing is um, how well you can see it, but in the back here, uh, you have your your little the lever here, which we have it set up for back, back button focusing. When you go to take the camera in and out, you need to pull that out to get it out of the way. If you don't, you risk bending that, which would be bad, so then it wouldn't work. Um, so that's kind of one thing that I don't particularly like about it. On this, we have on the back here, you can see this is our port for our strobes. 
So you can hook up cables for strokes or anything like that. There's a cap that goes on, but we just had it in the warrant yesterday, so I just took it off. All right, so the other one we have, it's the Nauticam. So it's for a Sony A6500 uh, mirrorless yes. camera. So smaller camera, smaller housing. And it's with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Yeah, much smaller lens on this yes. as well. Similar to um, the Ike light, you have your body, you have your port, you have your dome. So you still have the three major components. With this, it's so much easier to get it open because you literally just push this button right here. I can do it. Push this button, turn this, and it opens. Yes, it's much, so much easy. easier. Yes, and as with everything else on here, it, it's all the same. To get the dome off, you literally just pop this out, turn it, shift it a little, lifts off. With the, the, the dome, it's the same thing. It's like literally you flip a lever, I think I have this backwards, but you flip a lever, you basically open it up. It's very, very easy to put together and take apart. Again, it still has those three O-rings, so you do need to be mm -hmm. lubricating your O-rings at all. Always so, check your O-rings. Always check your O-rings. Yes. For Before damage. every single yes. shoot. We always check our O-rings, we always have spares, and we always pack the lube. So. Um, so let's talk about pressurizing this real quick. Yes. So, this has an electronic sensor in it for uh, pressure, which is very different than this one. So basically you pressurize this, it's got this light on top, and the light will be green once it's pressurized. As long as that light stays green, you're good. If that light does not stay green, get it out of the water, fast. So the port is right here, you just unscrew this cap like that, pop your little pressure thing on, suck the air out about 10 pumps, and then to release it, you would just push that down, but you keep it pressurized the entire time it's in use. Mm -hmm. And it has a switch on the inside that you turn on. Open back up. Right. Has a switch right down here in the bottom, and that's how you turn on and off the sensor system. And it literally just works off of a little watch battery that sits up in here. Mm -hmm. And that battery's been in here since this housing was new, and it hasn't died yet. And that, yeah, another really cool component of this is the additional battery that's hooked up. The A6500 yeah. is really notorious for its terrible battery life. And so that's why I was pretty hesitant about buying it. But this housing actually comes with an additional external battery for the Sony camera so that I can actually double my shoot time in the water with it. So I actually feel like it's, they're very similar cameras with very similar capabilities. Uh, just the housings are different and how we use them in the water is different. Yeah, the battery, this is the battery here, the extra battery. It's removable, you charge it and you put it back in. It sits right down there below. It's just an it awesome feature. Um, I don't think it comes with it. I'm pretty sure it's an additional it add on, yeah. but um, get it because this camera itself only has about 400 images to mm -hmm. a battery. Yeah. So you definitely need that extra card in there. So, and then this one is just so much lighter. I mean, yes, it is a lighter camera. It is a mirrorless camera compared to my D750 workhorse. And we can actually weigh them and uh, see the true weight difference, but I can tell you it's very significant. Um, I've used the Ike Light with the Nikon for the last three, four years. Yeah. And honestly, it's a workhorse. I have never had a flood, not gone wood. Um, I have never even had a close call with it. It is always dependable, it is always great you know well functioning solid i mean i swim a lot we're in current we're in challenging environments not just pools and this thing has not only kept up with me but it has you know totally exceeded my expectations plus the ability um it is very easy to connect the strobes to trigger them to get them adjusted so i love i mean this this has been my go-to rig for a long time and i i don't want to say anything bad about it except that it is very heavy um this is our newer one, and I've got to say, guys, I used it for the first time in the water yesterday, and I am in love. I am in love. It was so easy. Um, it has the viewfinder on the, you can either switch through the optical viewfinder or the L LED, LED, LCD? It's the, uh, the LCD screen LCD. and then the viewfinder up here, and it's an electronic viewfinder. So ours, we have ours set up at the moment that has a sensor in it, so we can it switches back and forth. You bring it up to your eye, it switches to the viewfinder when you pull it down, it senses that and it switches back to the LCD. Doesn't work that well on the housing, so you can manually set it to stay on the viewfinder or manually set it to stay on the LCD. Um, but the other nice thing about these mirrorless cameras is they have built-in image stabilization. So like with the Nikons, we're using lenses that have, um, that have like the VR on them. 
So it's, that's a, a stabilization, vibration reduction. Yeah, vibration reduction. These, they have the built-in image stabilization. So I even used this yesterday, shot some video underwater and it, it was very smooth. You know, even with my kicking and, and going up and down, it was still very, very mm -hmm. smooth. Um, something nice. else to note is that Nauticam actually doesn't make their own strobes. So if you want to use non-native strobes, which is what you have to do because they don't have native ones, it's actually per fairly easy to take my strobes from my other housing. I just had to buy an adapter cord and I'm able to use it over here on the Nauticam. So that's kind of a nice feature as well that you can kind of mix and match your gear kits, you know, based on your situation. You know, for example, the, the area that I was swimming in yesterday just had extreme current. I mean, it was rough. So do going with the lighter housing, you know, would have been really beneficial. So that's, you know, kind of nice to be able to look in your gear bag, figure out where you're going, make a plan and then use the appropriate rig. But honestly, I would say in terms, you know, in terms of build quality, both are great. Both are gonna get you what you need. I mean, truly, I I love having both in our arsenal and I can't wait to add even more. <laughs> so thank you so much. I hope that seeing this comparison between the two housings was helpful. Okay, great. See you guys next time. Bye. Later.